What's up, YouTube? Today I am going to be making a riot mask in this video. I've had this request from forever ago. Said I was going to get to it, and due to complications in my life, various cosplays I had to work on for conventions, and health issues recently, plus working 20 some days straight, 10 to 14 hours a day, has really put me behind on this. But since I am so behind, and also as a thank you for me being able to hit 3,000 subscribers, uh, the patterns are free. There's a link to them. They're up on Facebook if you want to build along and attempt to make your own. Now, I want to give a quick shout out to my sister, uh, Linda, who is now running an Etsy shop called KL Treasure, where she makes things like these awesome custom embroidered patches uh, Batman, Wonder Woman, Jack Skellington. I actually have a. Superman one that I put on the stock of my custom modified Rival Blaster. This contact cemented it on. So if you're looking for some patches or something, go ahead and check that out. I'll put a link to that down in the description. Along with links to the patterns. They'll be up on Facebook. And also links to some products on Amazon. They are affiliate links, so it does help out the channel. And for things like Placidip or whatever, if you're having trouble finding it. And let's go ahead and just jump right into the build. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is trace out and cut out all my pattern pieces on 5mm EVA foam. You can use thinner or thicker. Uh, I wouldn't go any thinner than 4mm, and I wouldn't go any thicker than 8 but if you don't have access to 5 you can always substitute, particularly for this part of the build. And for the main shell, minus of course the gums and teeth and all that, is just three pieces for each side. A 1, a 2, and a 3. And of course, whenever you print out the patterns, they are larger than an actual eight and a half by eleven paper, so you're going to have to tape together and assemble the pattern pieces to get the full pattern pieces. And I've traced out one of each of one and of two and of pattern piece three. And you'll notice that I have transferred all of my hash marks onto here. Particular area of interest and note is on the number two piece here. Because you'll notice there's two hash marks, one marked three and one marked two. Uh, or sorry, not three, but <laughs> I probably wrote three. It's actually one. I should correct this so I don't confuse myself. As you can see, even I make mistakes. So that is number one and number two. Because you'll notice on the number two piece here, this hash mark on here is going to line up with the number two hash mark, and this hash mark here is going to line up with the hash mark on your number one piece. So that when you glue all these together, they will line up evenly. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some contact cement, which I have here in a bottle, which is rather destroyed. You can't even hardly see the logo, but I purchased it in a much larger container. It is DAP Weldwood contact cement. I would recommend using DAP Weldwood or Barge as far as brand names go for contact cement. And the first place I'm going to apply my contact cement is on all these V-cuts on both parts of the masks, uh, various pattern pieces on the number two and the number three. I'm going to apply it on these V-cuts and I'm going to begin to glue them all together. Now if you haven't worked with contact cement before, how it works is you apply an even layer to both surfaces to be bonded. You allow this to set for 15 minutes for the glue to cure. Once the glue has sat for 15 minutes and has essentially dried, you will then push them together. Once you push them together, the bond will be immediate and permanent. So make sure that you have it lined up and even as you're gluing it together because it's a one and done process.
Okay, now that I have all the V cuts together, you can see it's already helped to pull some shape into the pieces. Next thing I'm going to do is line this up and glue these two points together like that so that these lines match up on both of the number two pieces. All right, now that I have matched up the registration marks and glued that together, it is starting to give it a nice curved dome shape there. And next I'm going to apply contact cement from the top here on the number two piece down to the lowest registration mark. I'm not going to put any contact cement past that. You don't want to seal up this seam. It's going to form the sharp point of the mouth. And the same thing on the number three piece here. I'm going to apply it down to the third registration mark and stop so that whenever I glue it together, once again, it will form that nice sharp mouth point. And this is what it looks like with the two pieces joined together. And this is what I was talking about by not doing it any further. So when the two are together, you have that nice mouth point. Next, I'm going to apply contact cement along this edge down here and all the way across and down to the back point here. And I'm going to apply contact cement on the number one piece along the bottom and along this edge. Let it sit for 15 minutes and attach them together. All right, here's what it looks like now that the one has been joined to the two. And just with the basic pattern shape alone, you begin to pull in some of the shape of the mask itself. Next, I'm going to start and apply some contact cement from here all the way around this edge to the bottom here on both sides and join the two main halves together. Right now that I have the two halves glued together, the last thing I need to do, of course, is just line up and contact cement the jaw. All right, and here it is with all the main shell pieces uh, fully attached and glued together. Okay, now that the main shell is assembled, I'm going to be doing some heat forming. And for this, I have a canvas uh, hat maker's mannequin. Oh, mine is pretty beat up, though. It's been destroyed from tons and tons of projects. And I also have a heat gun. And what I'm going to do with the heat gun is, in areas, for example, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show on camera directly, is the eyes. Because you see, they're just kind of sticking out like flaps, but you want them to curve and kind of match up with the rest of the curvature of the, the pattern in the mask itself. And this is a dual setting heat gun. Uh, I'm going to put it on high. And always remember that the tip gets very, very hot, so be very, very careful anytime you use one of these. getting hot I can just kind of press this against my mannequin and form it with my hand so now you'll see that with a little bit of effort I can get a basic curved shape into here so that it's not sticking out totally flat like this side it's now starting to curve down and I'm going to heat this on the inside and outside and work it until both of these eyes are nice and rounded and match up Okay, so I have rounded off both eyes here, and you'll probably notice that I've actually even gone as far as curving them in a little bit on both sides here, and curving them in here. And I've also took and heated and curved under and in this whole lip section here, I guess you could call it, this bottom piece here. That's part of the whole point of this seam here and this whole V-cut was to help start off that curvature. And then you're just going to want to heat it and follow it through. And I went even all the way up into the corners of the mouth here and heated and curved all of that in. Next thing I'm going to do is start to heat this. Because you'll notice it's kind of at a point, and most likely if you're doing the same project, yours is too. And I want to heat it so that this point actually goes in. That's where I actually want to divot. So I'm going to heat that next, come back, show you what that looks like. Okay, so here's what I mean by having a divot or an indentation. See, as before, it was kind of pointy there. Well, I've gradually heated and using my fingers have pushed this in so that whenever you look at it now, get it here and focus, when you look at it now, you'll notice it dips in the middle instead of having that point. And of course, doing that kind of knocks some of the other parts of it out of whack, so I had to go around and do a little bit more heat forming. And I follow this indentation all the way down the back here to about right here where I just let it remain flat and that's fine. 
And next I'm going to start to work on is the shape of the jaw and the mouth and start heating and curving it. Okay, so for the jaw, I am actually starting with the back. And you can probably see here what I've already done, which is I heated both inside and outside with the heat gun right along the seam in here. And then I stuck my hand on the inside of it and pushed out while pushing down with my opposite hand to put that shape there into the jaw. I'm trying to give it sort of a crocodilian, uh, much more pointy, angular uh, area right there. And from pushing this area here out as evenly as possible on both sides, next I'm going to start to heat along the edge of the lower jaw, being as careful as I can not to heat this because I've already shaped it. And if I reheat it, then I'll lose the shape. So I'll we'll most likely angle my heat gun so I get as much heat away from this top piece as I can. And I'm going to heat along this part of the jaw and I'm going to start curving it inwards like this all the way around. Okay, and here you can see I've begun to heat and curve the lower jaw, which gives it a pretty nice look and shape, at least basic shape to start with, to build on so that we get more of a, say, riot shape as opposed to, say, a venom shape. Now, if you're wondering if you're heating each side evenly or not, or one side maybe needs a little more curve than the other, you'll be able to tell. Because if you heat things and you tweak one side a lot and not the other, what will happen is it will start pulling the mask off to one side or the other. That's the point to re-examine what you're doing, provided you've glued everything evenly. When you heat everything evenly, it should still all line up like that. Okay, so for the lower part of the jaw, I first started back here, heated this, and you can see push this in a little bit here, which helped to make this part pop out just a little bit more. And then I just heated the edge and curved it, basically coming up and matching with this really long V-cut that we had here in the bottom of the jaw piece. And just curved that around slightly, not too much, because the more I curve this, the harder it's going to be to fit on my head. If I have to, I could just take and trim some of this off here. I don't really technically need all that, but I do need it to fit on my head. Okay, so that is pretty much it for all the main uh, initial heat forming that I'm going to do on this. All right, now that I'm happy with the shape, I am going to get my glue gun hot and use some hot glue and I'm going to just reinforce this seam from the inside and just run glue along the inside just to make sure that this doesn't come apart and also help give the mask a little bit more rigidity not much but yeah a little bit here you can see where I put the hot glue mostly just along the main seam uh, some of these v-cuts here and on the chin as well and those V-cuts up on the lower lip also, just to help make sure those don't want to separate or pull apart. I really want all that to just stay securely in place. Now that my basic shape is in, I'm going to take my main top accent piece here and trace it out on some 5mm EVA foam. I am using pink foam so that it will stand out from the other pattern pieces, which are also, of course, all 5mm craft foam as well. And you'll notice that these are not just part of the shape. These three are V-cuts. I'm going to apply contact cement on them just like I did for the other pieces. And I'm going to glue those together. And once I have my V-cuts together, I'm going to position this so that and it'll be marked in the pattern, but that this part here is the eye corner. So you see the other pieces just kind of overlap here. And once I get these V-cuts together, I will trace around where I need to put my contact cement, apply my contact cement to here and the back of this and glue both these on. And here is what it looks like with the V-cuts. They don't give it a whole, whole lot of shape, but they give it enough curve that when you do uh, place it, and like I say, I traced around mine just a rough line with my fingernail, putting a little line in the foam so I'd know where to put the contact cement. And once you contact cement it together, it's pretty easy if you put one hand inside and press down from the outside to get this to fit it pretty nicely right through that space there. And I'm going to go ahead and contact cement the second one to this. And both of them I cut slightly irregular from the other. And what I mean by that is I kept the same general basic shape, but I didn't follow the lines exactly because, you know, it's a the, the symbiote is a living you know, breathing entity in and of itself. 
So I, you know, wanted it to at least have a little bit of differences so it didn't look so cookie cutter and manufactured. And the next piece I cut out and put in was the rear center accent piece. And it's marked to front and uh, to bottom or rear so you know which end goes where. And it just fits right down the center here on the back in between the other two that we just put on. And the next ones I'm going to trace out are going to be the main accent upper lip. I'm going to trace out one side, flip it over, trace out the other. Once again, both on the 5mm EVA foam. I've attached the eye pieces to both sides, the accent layer number one. And next, I'm going to start working on the pieces for the side of the jaw here and the two points that are going to have to come out on the front here. Okay, so next I've cut out my jaw side accent pieces, and they are going to be glued on here, and this tip is going to come right down and meet up with your seam. But I'm actually going to leave a gap over here, and I'm not going to fill this in. And what I did was, I left it not glued, and then I filled it in using my hot glue gun to fill all the dead space. Okay, and with both jaw pieces glued on, like I say, it gives it that more distinctive riot shape to the jaw area here, especially when you're looking at it from like a sideways angle versus just looking purely like venom. But you'll notice another thing if you look at reference photos or screenshots from the film or just watch the film itself, the chin has two points. Now it was kind of next to impossible to get that specifically, say, with just a foam shell. So I made chin point pattern pieces, and they look like this. Now you notice this black line down the center I just drew there as a guide. I will also put it on the pattern. It is not a cut line. It is a fold line. And what I do is I heat this up with the heat gun real good, and I've already done one here. I fold it along this line. I also stretched it a little so it has a slight swoop to it here, as you can see looking at it sideways. And there you can see side by side the flattened one and the folded one pretty much at a 45 or slightly more than 45 maybe it's a little bit more a little bit sharper than that now the back sides of them I cut at an angle you'll notice I did not cut them flat that is that whenever it's folded it will meet up more flushly with the mask and I will glue these on and show you how that looks okay so here is both the basic chin points glued on and you'll notice the peaks stop up here where this V-cut was, and the other ones on the bottom meet up pretty much in the center. I left a little gap in it, but that gives it the overall shape of the riot. Now, the next thing I need to do is go through and start sanding all this, because this just looks goofy and blocky with just all this excess foam on here. So I'm going to start sanding this down, rounding it out. I'm going to do a little more gradual here and a little more sharp here, but yeah. All right, so now that I'm going to sand, I sat here and debated for a minute. I do know that I want to put a lot of cuts and things into this, but first I need to sand and round out all these extreme lips here from the different pattern pieces. But I also decided, you know, I kind of want to keep in mind where I'm going to cut. So I took a Sharpie and just kind of drew out a generic uh, idea for all the cracks and crevices and different pieces and ways I'm going to cut this up. Like for example, these here will be thin lines cut in to like kind of signify the lips. And little stretch marks across here and over here and things like that. But now I'm going to go ahead and start sanding this. And to sand this, I'm going to use a Dremel 4000 with a medium grit sanding head. Okay, so I sanded up one half and started doing a little bit over here. I could put some grooves in and stuff, but I left it pretty much untouched just so you could see the difference in one side to the next. See here how I did a pretty broad 
and gradual sweep up into this, but over here it's a little bit more steep and sharp since it's coming down into the definition of the eyes. And of course, rounded all this out too. Followed up the actual cut lines here. And tried to be pretty random about, I didn't want it all just sanded down to an even length. Some I went much further down with the sanding, and some I didn't go very much at all, and I left it pretty squared off, like right there. Same thing on all these other parts. I just kind of did it as random as possible so that it doesn't look like, you know, something manufactured. I don't want it to look like something living. Okay, I got everything sanded, and like I say, some of the lines that I drew in, like you can see right here, I just ground in with the Dremel. And you'll notice too that I also went through and put cuts into this, and the cuts I put in, I used my X-Acto knife, which has a curved blade, and that makes it not 100% easy, but easier to do curved cuts and curved shapes versus the straight blade. And you'll notice I went through and a lot of these, even though they're on two separate pieces and they look like they don't interconnect, they actually do interconnect. You'll notice they cross over and keep following and cut back and through. And now, in order to get these cuts to have some kind of definition and shape, I'm gonna use my heat gun. I don't drop this. I'm going to use my heat gun and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my heat gun nice and hot Then I'm going to take it and put it real close to the surface. I'm not going to touch it but close to the surface and then draw it away because I don't want the heat to go all the way through the layers of foam or even all the way through a single layer of foam. I don't want to lose the shape. I just want the very surface where I did these cuts with to get hot and open up. And pretty much all of my cuts are between one millimeter and two to three millimeters. Three I would say at its deepest particular areas like curve where I'm going slower and applying a little more pressure to try to get, you know, that nice even stroke. But yeah, that's how it looks so far. And you'll notice here, like on the lips and the chin, I did a lot of just straight cuts across here uh, when I was looking at various reference photos, particularly in the scene where he has Eddie tied up and he's asking, where's Venom? Uh, you, I, you can really get some good sh uh, screenshots from that scene. You can see just how like it looks like stretch skin here, but going up into these areas, it looks more like something say that is akin to tree bark, very rough tree bark, or like pyroclastic flows of lava, or something like that. So I wanted to try to capture that as much as possible. And here's what the surface looks like after that whole heat gun montage. Uh, all the cuts have spread open and have a nice wide feel. And boy, that heat gun was really hot. You can see it started to melt the foam, like in that area right there, which is really dark. Wow. But yeah, it is the effect that I was hoping to get. This isn't a wholly necessary step. Uh, it's kind of a personal preference thing, but I have some vinyl and fabric specialty coating. I usually pick this up at AutoZone. You can get it through Amazon though. I'll make sure to try and put links down below for all these different products that I'm using. But my issue is like now that I've gotten this far in it, it's kind of hard for me to tell where I'm going to need to apply silicone and whatnot and where I'm not going to want to do that. And part of the reason is this different colored foam because I have blue, red, and pink. Now part of the reason I do this is so that Everyone watching can easily distinguish the different pattern colors. If I just put it all on black foam, like, you know, it would just all kind of blend and go together. So what I'm going to do is turn it all one color. Now, this is not a paint. It is a dye, and it's meant for plastics and synthetics. So that is part of the reason why I can do this without sealing it first. You generally need to seal it first for you use something like spray paint, because spray paint is, well, a paint, not a dye. This is more of a liquid, and when spray paint dries, it does things like cracks and does other problems and flakes off, especially on foam. So if you're going to paint something like foam, you usually need to plastic dip it or mod podge it or do something first to seal it in. But since this is a dye, it's just going to get absorbed into the foam and turn it all one color so I don't have a headache and a stomach ache looking at this ugly amalgamation of colors.
Okay, so after examining it under multiple light sources, uh, indoor light, outdoor light as well, and just taking some photos and uh, looking at video from it, I'm actually totally happy with the way this has come out, unbelievably. And I'm not actually even going to do any silicone work because I feel like the way I cut the lines and everything came out looking good enough that I'm just I just think it's fine the way it is. Shockingly enough. So next, what I'm going to do is seal it. And I am going to be using Plastidip at some point, but first, I have taken some Mod Podge and some black paint. You don't have to use Createx airbrush paint. You can just use regular old acrylic craft paint. And mix them together to get to the color and consistency that you personally would like. Uh, part of the reason why I'm not using a spray or aer aerosol uh, type thing for a sealant such as Plastidip or whatever, you'll notice just from painting, or not painting it, but dyeing it with that uh, vinyl and synthetic dye, it didn't get in these cracks. You can still see the pink and you can see the blue and you can just tell that it didn't get in everything but whenever I use a brush and apply it I can dab it and get down into all those cracks and get it looking the way that I want which becomes a little problematic whenever you're trying to evenly apply something and get it in a crack it ends up just kind of becoming a mess getting runs I don't want that so I am gonna seal it by hand Okay, so it did take me probably about a half hour, 40 minutes to apply the mixture of paint and Mod Podge, but it does dry in about an hour, which is nice. And now I'm going to apply some Plastidip, not so much to seal it, but just to apply some texture to it. And what I mean by that is instead of putting a thick, wet, even coat, I'm just going to kind of speckle it on. Okay, so I've done multiple coats to get a decent texture over the whole entire thing. And now I'm going to go back and do one final coat with the mixture of Mod Podge and black paint to turn this uh, yet another nice base coat of black. And then I'll start airbrushing uh, from there. Alright, now that I've got this all black again, I am going to use some Kratex Colors Wicked Silver. Uh, from their Wicked Colors line, and I'm going to put that through my airbrush. I usually do thin it out with water as well, and I'm not going to put it on thick. Just a nice uh, thin highlighting is essentially what I'm going to do. Alright, now that i got the metallic on, like I say, I just did it pretty thinly, so you can still see some of the dark black showing through. And now I have some Createx Transparent uh, Medium Gray. I'm going to use that in kind of the same process of thin amounts, just an overspray, but to help dull down some of the metallic. Alright, and next, I'm going to use some Createx uh, Opaque Black. I'm going to use that to add some low lights, i.e. put some of the darkness in the recessed and more shadowed areas to give it a little bit more depth, and also to turn the lips black. Alright, now that the external shell is mostly painted, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start to put in the gums and some of the other pieces. And the first thing I'm doing here is the corner. There's not a pattern for this. Basically all I do 
is I take some 2 millimeter EVA foam. Up to this point I've been using 5, but I happen to be able to find some pink 2 millimeter EVA foam and I took my heat gun and heated it and wrinkled it up. And once I do that, I just take the mask and I position it inside and figure out where I want it. Uh, cut off some of the excess and then I just used some super glue to glue that in. Okay, so now that I have both of the side pieces glued in here, the wrinkled 2mm foam, I took some more 2mm EVA foam that is also once again pink and I cut out the top and bottom. Of course the marker side is going to be on the inside so you don't see it. But you'll notice lines here and that's to signify the point that is the center and that for example is going to be lined up and glued on the inside and matched up with my center seam. And to glue these on, I'm once again going to use contact cement. Start with the middle and then work each side around. All right, and here it is with the gums glued in on the top and the bottom. And now it's gradually starting to look a little bit more like Riot. And now I get to start making approximately a hundred tiny teeth that I have to individually glue in. Okay, so now that I've got the gums in, I started to move on to the teeth. Now I heated the gums here on the bottom and once I did that I pushed them in and the gums on the top I just left standing straight down. And to make the teeth I am using 2 millimeter beige EVA foam. And I just happened to find this in a multi-pack at a Walmart. I actually didn't pick it up at Hobby Lobby like I usually do and I didn't order it. And just been sitting around and I thought hey I'll use this for the teeth. Between the pinks for the, the, the pink for the gums and the color on the teeth, I'm just gonna have to do some touch-up work with the airbrush prior to coating it all in Mod Podge and then of course sealing it all. But how I make these teeth is I start off with these little spear point looking things, which I will put in the patterns, but I don't actually uh, draw them out or pattern them out. I just cut out random shapes and sizes and then I heat them with a heat gun. First I do one end, and you can kind of see here how there's this wide spot right there in the center. That's because I'm pinching on one end with these fingers. And then I heat the other end and I pinch that close. And I basically just fold it in half. And at the same time, just kind of stretch it down so it has a curve to it. And that is how I end up with my teeth. And to glue them in, I'm gluing them in individually using super glue. I just put a little dot on the end of the tooth and then stick it upside and hold it in place until the glue bonds. Which is why there is a layer of contact cement and super glue stuck all over my fingers, which is from gluing these up inside. But I have been making some decent progress. And of course, looking at the reference photo, so I made sure I had the extra long snaggle tooth in right here uh, and things like that. And just trying to get it as close as I can, considering what I'm working with. All right, so I got all the teeth in on the top and bottom. And you notice I have a couple overlapping teeth here that are actually on the top of the gums, like here. They're glued on top of the gums as opposed to underneath it, and I simply just rounded off the ends and used some super glue and just glued it to the outside. And just kind of positioned them any which way. Did them random lengths, put them at random angles. I did use a reference photo somewhat as a guide, but not 100%. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take some more of that transparent medium gray and my airbrush and I'm going to start uh, low lighting the gums and parts of the teeth. So all I really did on this was darken it, read in little recesses in between where I glued the teeth. So you can just see it's just lightly darker gray. And also did a little bit on the teeth just to make them look more realistic and a little dingy and have some of the same gray color down here bleeding into that. 
And I got some Mod Pod Super High Shine Acrylic Sealer. Supposedly this stuff is flexible. We'll see. But I didn't want to use Flex Seal like I did on the Carnage cosplay because that would end up rendering all of the texture moot because it's just so thick. I don't want that, so I'm going to use this instead. It has been about 38 hours since I clear coated this, and I mentioned it briefly already, but I'm going to go over this real quick if anyone is, cares or is interested. I didn't use the Flex Seal because the Flex Seal you would not be able to see all the texture that I put in it. And when the light hits it, especially with this high gloss shine, you can really see it. Now, next question would be why didn't I just use like a crystal clear enamel or something like that. Well, whether it's an acrylic or an enamel clear coat, generally, if it's anything that's like spray paint oriented, when it dries, it is very crisp and brittle. And for example, like these teeth here, the Mod Podge, it can actually have some give and it doesn't crack or give those spiderwood cracks or, or cracks or anything like that. Because the Mod Podge is actually pretty flexible, which it's advertised as such, but you never know what you're gonna get until you try it. So it was a risk, but it worked out. Now the next issue I had, this right now is sitting on something and all the weight is right here, but I was noticing whenever I would sit it down, the weight of it would cause the mouth to start to close because there's so much weight here. So what I did was I went through on the inside and I glued in some pieces in the area that it's not going to like, you know, restrict movement or I actually need to pad the top more so it fits me correctly, but that's beside the point. And some hot glue and just kind of reinforced it. All around these areas, you can see I kind of went around the jaw and then also in the center and the top and in between the eyes here as well. Just so that whenever I do sit it down and it's not sitting on a stand or something, it's not going to close and the teeth aren't going to, you know, get all wrinkled and messed up. But that was one problem I ran into due to all the weight of having all this stuff on here. All right, on to the eyes. Now in Venom and a couple different uh, ones so far, I've used this uh, Source 1 8 inch thick acrylic plexiglass. Uh, make sure you order it in clear if you do decide to go that route. Uh, it has great visibility. I want to say 90% of the light goes through it, and it's almost as clear as glass as far as like your vision. But the only thing is it's kind of heavy. And with all the weight already on this, I'm a little worried about using it. So instead, what I'm going to use is some cheap, inexpensive, easy-to-find packaging plastic. I'm going to cut this down the sides. Hold it up here, trace around on the plastic, the shape of rough shape of the eye, cut it out, and I'm going to take and paint some clear mesh fabric to put in with it. Okay, I traced out my shape for the eyes and cut it out. Obviously, roughly larger than this. It is obviously going to be glued in from the inside, not from the outside. And then I took some sheer fabric and traced out the shape of my plastic pieces for the eyes. This will be glued on the inside of this with the shiny plastic on the outside, which of course I will Windex first prior, prior to gluing in uh, the inside and outside. So that's nice and shiny. Once you glue everything together, you got fingerprints on the inside and smudged. Well, it's going to look like that later. And as you can see, I took a Sharpie and drew some little veins and stuff on it. Now, I had a couple pieces of packing foam and a scrap piece of half inch thick EVA foam and I glued those together and stuck it in with push pins because next I'm going to take my airbrush and I'm going to hit this with some white and a little bit of black and well not black but some more transparent gray around the edges but I don't want this laying flat on a surface I want it propped up like this because whenever it touches something that paint tends to glob up and get really bad and you just want it lightly on there.
Okay, so here's what they look like now that I have put the lenses in, and I've gone ahead and glued one on the inside. Now, to glue the fabric to this, you'll notice the yellowing around the edges. That's from the contact cement, and that's part of the reason why I made this much bigger than the actual eye area itself, was so that you wouldn't see that yellow from the contact cement. And to install these, I also took my contact cement and contact cemented just around the edges here and then on the inside around the eye and then just stuck it in. However, contact cement in this plastic, or any plastic for that matter, aren't exactly the best unless you sand it and this stuff is just way too thin to sand. And even if you sand it, it doesn't hold the greatest. So what I did after that was, on the very, very, very edge of it, I took and put some hot glue all the way around it. Now, I used low temperature glue sticks and a low temperature glue gun, and I didn't let it sit for very long to get too hot. Because if you get it too hot or you use high temp hot glue on it, it will definitely end up warping the plastic half the time. So I'm going to go ahead and pop in the other lens here and then try this thing on and see how I look in it. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Uh, one thing I probably am going to do is add a secondary layer of uh, the sheer fabric that I have. Now, I get a lot of questions as far as what brand or style do I recommend. I think that's a very personal thing. And what I mean by that is, you know, as you noticed in, in the previous footage, you can see my eyes through it. However, I have excellent vision out of this. The more layers of fabric and things like that that I start to put into any of these symbiote masks, whether it's she venom or... Uh, toxin or venom or riot you know the less I can see and the more my vision is obstructed the more awesome it looks but the less I can see so my advice is pick it up and if you can hold it up to the light look through it and decide for yourself what you think is most appropriate and then also to take into consideration that balance between looking good and being comfortable and having decent vision there's always that to consider so I hope that you all enjoyed this video and as always, I thank you for watching, and thank you as well for getting me past 3,000 subscribers. I really do appreciate it. And as always, have a great day.